Well, it's Labor Day weekend. Uh, it was always funny. I always thought funny as a kid. It was Labor Day weekend, and I heard all the people going to the lake, going to the golf course, going here, going there, doing all that. You know where I spent every single Labor Day for 40 something years? In the tobacco patch. In the tobacco patch. That was one of the great days that you could get your tobacco put in, in the tobacco patch. So Labor Day has never been a holiday, per se, except for the last few years. But you know what? I thought today we would look at labor a little bit. That we would look at labor performed by others, God, Jesus, and maybe a little labor performed by ourselves. You know, labor, sometimes it doesn't require much. I have a story that I found quite interesting. I had, I had heard about it and read it years ago, but I'd forgotten about it. It's called the 57 cent church. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. The 57 cent church. A little girl stood near a small church. Now this took place around 1900. Remember that. A different setting, a different time. But still, the, the uh, uh, it's the same lesson that can be learned. A little girl stood near a small church from which she had been turned away because it was too crowded. I can't go to Sunday school. She sobbed as she saw the pastor as he walked by. Seeing her shabby, unkept appearance, the pastor guessed the reason and taking her by the hand, took her inside and found a place for her in the Sunday school class. The child was so happy that they found room for her. She went to bed that night thinking of the children who had no place to worship Jesus. Some two years later, the child lay dead in one of the poor tenements buildings. Her parents called the kind-hearted pastor who had befriended their daughter to handle the final arrangements. As her poor little body was being moved, a worn and crumpled red purse was found, which seemed to have rummaged from some trash. She, which seemed to have been rummaged from some trash dump. Inside was found 57 cents and a note scribbled in the child's handwriting, which read, "This is to help build the little church bigger, so more children can go to Sunday school." For two years, she had saved for this offering of love. When the pastor tearfully read the note, he knew exactly what he would do. Carrying the note and the cracked red pocketbook to the pulpit, he told the story of her unselfish love and devotion. He challenged his deacons to get busy and raise enough money for a larger building. But the story does not end there. A newspaper learned of the story and published it. It was read by a wealthy realtor who offered them a parcel of land worth thousands of dollars. When told that the church could not pay so much, he offered to sell the little church the land for 57 cents. Church members made large donations. Checks came in from far and wide. Within five years, the little girl's gift had increased to $250,000, a big amount for the 19, early 1900s. Her unselfish love had paid large dividends. The next time you're in Philadelphia, look at the Temple Baptist Church with its seating of 3,300 people. And be sure to visit Temple University where thousands of students are educated. Have a look, too, at the Good Samaritan Hospital and the Sunday School Building, which houses hundreds of beautiful children, built so that no child in the area would not, would not be able to go to Sunday School. In one of the rooms of this building may be seen the picture of the sweet face of this little girl whose 57 cents so sacrificially saved made such a remarkable 
history. Alongside of it, a portrait of the kind pastor, Dr. Russell Conwell, who authored the book, Acres of Diamonds. So sometimes it's just a little thing that can magnify and the Lord can take it and build it into something really big. Thank the Lord for that story. Let us pray.